Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Nashville Attorney Elliot Osmond. We're talking about the immigration issue. Uh, Elliot, before we took the break, you were talking about a, a regulation that the that ICE is looking at promulgating through the Homeland Security that would basically greatly expand the area in which uh, the ICE could operate in terms of detaining people. And this would this would require the usual public comment period as well, though, before it goes into into effect. Although. There's not a vote at the end of that. The, the agency decides whether they're going to put it in or not. You think they're they're pretty determined to bring this this rule and regulation into effect? I think they are waiting for the right moment to do it. And actually, there are two law enforcement agencies inside the Department of Homeland Security. One is ICE, but the other is Customs and Border Patrol. And what's so significant about this expansion of jurisdiction, if it happens, is that uh, Border Patrol will have the right to stop anyone in the city of Nashville and within 500 miles of the border and question them about their immigration status and if that person cannot prove that they've been here for two years on the spot on the spot then the uh, Border Patrol can issue an expedited removal order deporting that person without ever taking them into immigration court. In terms of Nashville, if that or something like that took effect, what size of the population here would be at some risk? And are they already starting to think about going into hiding on something like this? Many of them are. Are they in hiding? What, in terms of going into hiding, what sort of things do they have to do to be able to do that and still? Well, I would advise them operate. not to go into hiding because that's they're eventually going to be discovered. What they need to do is to carry with them in their billfold some proof that they have been here for two years. Now, that could very simply be a Christmas card envelope that was sent to them at their address that has a postmark at least two years old. Something simple like that could make a big difference. Now this will primarily be adults that will be taken into custody, or is there some reason to believe this might well happen with children? Uh, I don't think the uh, Border Patrol would catch children, but they might follow children home to where their parents live and attempt something like that. Uh, after the child has arrived back home. Looking at the Supreme Court, there were rumors again this week, appear, apparently unfounded, that Justice Anthony Kennedy might also retire from the court soon, giving President Trump another appointment on the Supreme Court. Uh, Justice Kennedy, would, if he left, would be, would be a profound change on the court. He has been a swing vote on a number of issues well beyond potential immigration or anything else. Uh, long term, are you concerned? President Trump's going to be president, it looks like, at least now, at least another three, almost four years, and there are a number of people on the Supreme Court who might be of age to think about retiring. I'm certainly concerned about it. You raise a very valid point, and we're holding our breath to see if the present uh, membership of the Supreme Court will hold. Now, here in Tennessee, when the council was talking about doing this, the entire Republican establishment up on the Hill, almost every member of the House came out in favor, uh, came out against this and urged Nashville not to do it, using the term sanctuary city. Sanctuary city seems to me at this point to be more of a, of a, of a slogan or a, or a charge to be made politically. It's, it's not actually defined in the law, is it? No, it's not. Now, I think Tennessee might have defined sanctuary city, but I can tell you definitively, Pat, that I've looked at this bill, uh, this ordinance, and there uh, it is not a sanctuary city bill. That is a false charge. And uh, there are uh, no less than four different places in this ordinance which says that if this ordinance is interpreted to violate any federal mandate, uh, it will be, uh, that part of it will be unenforceable. Four different places in this bill. Uh, another issue that came up that Mayor Barry raised in a letter to ICE is that when they are out in the community, they have the word ICE on their uniforms, but it also underneath it says the word police. Do you think that's misleading? And if so, what can be done about it? Well, it's misleading, but I don't think Mayor Barry is going to be able to do anything about it if ICE decides to continue that policy. And you have no reason to believe they do that not only here, but all across the country. That's my right? understanding. So um, what happens, what's the political consequence from this? I can remember a few years ago, you, uh, many years ago, when you and I both had dark hair, you ran for Congress once upon a time. Uh, Sheriff Hall will be up for re-election next year. Do you believe this will have any kind of repercussions for him in terms of running in the Democratic primary in this county next year? Well, I think it certainly will. I'm a little surprised, uh, to be honest, that Sheriff Hall has aligned himself with the Trump-Hall uh, uh, 
but with with the Trump segment of the Republican Party in this county, uh, he'll have to answer for that in the next election. Even though it's a nonpartisan election, people are not going to forget that he has aligned himself with Councilman Swope and the Trump wing of the Republican Party, which is not the mainstream yet. So you, at this point, your days of running for office are, are behind you? I mean, oh, the last time you ran, I just, for the audience who may not know, you ran in 1978 uh, for Congress. It was the time that the incumbent congressman, Clifford Allen, had died, and, and, and uh, State Senator Bill Boner at that time was the only candidate sort of left on the Democratic primary. And as I recall, you ran as an independent at that time. That's correct. I ran as, as a write-in candidate. And very difficult. Yeah, write-in and independent, that's two very difficult things to try to yes. do. Yes. No, my, my running days are over. In the first place, I can't even jog uh, because <laughs> because of my health. Yeah, and that's a throw in the ring. <laughs> no, I don't have any desire or intention whatsoever. I appreciate the compliment that anybody would think I could or should, but that's out of the question. Ellen Osmond, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for bringing your insights of what's going on with this difficult issue of immigration. Pat, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics this week. Hope you'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get to politics in the meantime, starting later in July, you'll be able to see my commentary, Inside Politi uh, Capital View. It'll be back on News Channel 5's website every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.